So, step one of doing roller printing is going to be that I need uh, two pieces of metal. So I'm going to always have a sandwich once I once I put this through the roller. So I've already uh, pre-cut two pieces of material, um, and I'm going to I'm going to just clean them up just a little bit. One of the things about doing a roll print, um, especially if it's a really uh, unique um, material or something that's really subtle is that you don't want any previous scratches in the metal to show up in your pattern. So I just have some 400 grit sandpaper and I'm going to go ahead and pre-sand my metal, especially two sides so that I've got two really usable pieces. This is one of those steps that you do need to remember right away um, because we're going to have a lot of steps coming up that um, are going to be to soften the metal in order to be able to roll it. And as we know, sanding work hardens the metal, so you want to do this at the beginning so that we get all these unwanted scratches out. So I've got some 400 there, and then I'm going to switch to some 600. And I just have a couple of pieces of sandpaper that I've pre-cut, but they just came out of big sheets. Um, but that's kind of that's kind of nice. And you do you do probably want to just do this by hand if you are on any kind of nice table or anything. Make sure that you put down a scrap piece of wood because you'll get your table pretty filthy. So there's 600. And then this one's ready to go. So the next step is going to be that we're going to have to take it over and anneal it. We need to anneal the metal so that we can soften it so that then this can take on the texture. So that's it. Two pieces to 600. So when you get your metal from a manufacturer, it's been put through rollers, it's been refined. It is what we refer to as work hardened. And so um, that is when the crystalline tr structure has been broken up into um, smaller segments and now it's harder to work with. We need this to be really soft in order to press our pattern into it. So the next process we need to do is called annealing. So we're gonna be annealing uh, a lot um, for most of the time that we're doing things. I'm gonna show two different ways to anneal. Um, because annealing is that we are trying to get it to this prescribed temp temperature to um, reform the crystalline structure and to make the uh, metal usable. So this is copper and it's uh, a, really our softest metal that we're going to be working with and it takes on um, patinas really well and it takes on pattern really well. So I'm going to use it for this. Uh, I have my torch ready but I'm going to actually switch to a number two. Um, this the numbers are here, and um, this one's a number one. So I just unscrew. I'm going to push it all the way down to where I can't see the holes there, and then just screw it on. Never over tighten a torch tip because you don't want to uh, mess up the threading. So just a good good tightening, but don't you know over overdo it. Okay, and so we're ready to we're ready to anneal this piece. The first one I'm going to do is just with color. So I'm going to strike from the top or the side. And when we strike, you need to be pushing down and pulling across to get that spark. The top of the side is is important so that you don't end up um, you know burning yourself with the reflection of it. You also know that we have um, acetylene air torch tips, and so sometimes when you turn it off, you'll see a little spark that comes out of those uh, holes there. So, okay. So, first one we're going to do is going to be based on color. I'm going to go just nice and easy. Keep the temperature, keep the heat on the metal, and I'm doing it just like I would be spray painting something. And I can pull my heat off of the metal and you can see that there's a color change. So this is where we would say this is like the rainbow stage. So the metal is getting nice and hot. I'm 
and eating consistently, and there's that, that really good rainbow stage. Now, after I start to get down through the metal again, all of the metal is kind of a dark gray. It's all consistent, so that's the next stage. And then I'm gonna be looking for when it is kind of, uh, the flame coming off of it is turning orange, just like you see there. So when it's turning orange, and even when my torch goes across and I can kind of see that it's pink behind it, that has been a meal. So that's, that's one way. I have some water um, in a quench bucket. Make sure you're using tongs because it's hot. Just copper tongs. And I've just quenched it in just straight water. Now, this spot is really hot, so make sure that you um, use tongs to place it back up again. Having a brick behind it is going to be a helpful way to make sure that that um, heat reflects. So the next way that I'm going to show is using um, griff flux or whatever flux you use for soldering. And the thing that's cool about the flux is it is going to become mirror-like or glassy um, at the same temperature of annealing. It's probably roughly uh, 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere in there. Um, and so I can still do that rainbow technique. The tricky thing is, is if I follow the rainbow in the dark color, it's harder to see in brass um, and even harder to see in nickel silver. So it's nice to have another option. I put the flux on the back of it and the part that I didn't sand as well because once I pickle it and clean it, it will uh, create some discoloring. So I don't want to have to sand that again. So same thing. And I always tell my students, don't scribble with the torch. Just nice and easy strokes, keep that heat on. So, we're to the rainbow stage. And you need your torch to be about an inch away from the blue cone for its hot spot. So now we're at that black stage, and just keep a watch on that flux. Because now it is starting to look like a mirror or glassy, however you want to describe it. See how it's a mirror? And then I can also see that the, my torch tip and um, the end of that is turning bright orange. It, that's where it's annealed. Okay? So that one's also annealed. So I have my two pieces out of the quench. And if I'm not wearing safety glasses, I'm gonna just drop them in behind and have the lid block my face. This is our, um, our pickle. This is gonna be what's cleaning our metal. It's a light acid, um, sodium bisulfate. And um, yeah, it's gonna stay in there for a couple of minutes. And then we'll take it out, we'll quench it in the baking soda and water, and then we'll scrub it a little bit, and then we'll be ready to go. So my pieces of copper have been in the pickle for a little while, and I'm ready to take them out. As you're working, you're gonna, um, you'll have to change the pickle out here and there. So I've taken it out and then I've drop it, dropped it into a mixture of baking soda and water. So that's an acid, there's the base and we're neutralizing there. And you just need a little bit of um, baking soda in there. Then, I have some scotch fried pads and some pumice. I'm going to just go back to that side that was done with 600. If you have to bring some wet dry 600 sandpaper over to the sink, you can. Um, but just be aware that the more that you scrub, the more that you're work hardening it. So we do want it really nice and soft so that we can roll press. And then I want it really dry. So a lot of times I just use a shop towel and use the paper towels, but you'll, you'll find that you're um, going through a ton of them. So anything you can do to conserve would be great. So um, I need it really, really dry because it's going to go into my steel rollers. Definitely don't want any water hitting any of the steel in our room because we don't want to rust it. 
So, we're ready? Let's head to the rolling mill. So here we are at the rolling mill. We are going to use this roller for all of our um, texturing because this is uh, for sheet. So the other rolling mill is going to have sheet and wire. So I have my two pieces of material and then I have what I'm going to pattern. So I just took a shop towel and I just cut it down. The important thing about the sandwich is that you want none of the cotton to be hanging out. So the whole reason why we had to make two pieces of metals is that we're going to sandwich the material in between and we do not want that material to hit the rollers because if that texture goes on the rollers then it stays forever and then everybody gets this texture that you had. And we don't want that. These are very expensive and hard to clean in a way that doesn't create more scratches. So uh, again, the gauge plate is sitting here so that you actually know what you're working with. So I started with 18 gauge metal and with this rolling mill, uh, we have um, a number gauge on top that you can you can gauge the how tight it's going to be so that then you can repeat this over and over again. So my steps are the same every time. I am going to open my rollers until my metal fits all the way through and then I'm going to close them back down until I can't pull it out myself. So then I'm going to back it out. So all we have done so far is we've set the thickness of the rollers to the thickness of our sandwich. So if I just went and rolled it through right now, no, there would be no pressure. It's just the thickness of these two things together. So I like to use my numbers just so that um, if I like the pattern, I can repeat it. So uh, I'll show this again in class, but I usually go to like a number two and then I'm going to back this to the zero and all that's done is it's tightened the roller. So you could just do that by feel as well. And I'm going to go even more because I really want, a real, it's a kind of a thicker piece of fabric, and so I want to make sure that it presses. Just go a little bit more. So I went like four. Okay, and so I've just put in a little bit to commit, and then now I'm gonna go for it. That's beautiful. This is pretty much ruined forever, so you just throw that away. So whatever you're going to put through there, fabric, paper, things like that, it's going to be pretty destroyed afterwards. Um, so uh, we'll patinate this, and then I'll show you the details of it. Once we patinate. So our last step here before we get sawing or anneal it again is that we need to flatten it. Um, our anvil still has little nicks and things from doing mocha megane or blacksmithing or something so you want to make sure that your pattern is faced up and then you're going to use the dead blow hammer which is um, rubber so it's not going to mar your um, piece make sure that there's nothing sticking to the rubber like a little piece of metal or something um, and then you're just going straight down with your blows hammer because there's shot inside of it and so whenever it hits the anvil instead of recoiling with equal pressure coming back like usually happens it's going to hit kind of dead dead straight on your on your piece and it's not going to recoil so main reason for saying that is you do not want your fingers in there period you could get a really good blood blister if you hit your fingers That's it. Now we're ready to make stuff with our beautiful texture. Here is the final texture from our shop towel. So I have my two pieces of flattened pattern material and then I can saw out forms, anything that I want to do from there. So. A couple of friendly reminders from the whole process. Uh, once you've cut your metal, your two sandwiches, make sure that you sand out any unwanted scratches. 
whenever you anneal, make sure that you use proper ventilation um, and safety measures whenever you're using that torch. Uh, once you have pickled and cleaned the metal, make sure that the metal is extremely dry before you use a rolling mill. Um, the pattern material needs to stay inside the sandwich no matter what. And then when you, after you have roll pressed, when you use the dead blow hammer, make sure your pattern is facing up so that you don't get scratches from the anvil. And make sure you do not hit your fingers because you would regret it. So uh, that's it. We have this beautiful pattern. I'm gonna uh, make something out of it and then patinate it and do really cool things hopefully. So thank you for watching.